everybody. I am joined by the singer and songwriter, Asia. She is wonderful and amazing. Tell my audience a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hello, everybody. My name is Asia Nairi. Um, yes, I'm a singer, songwriter. Um, I'm also like a social media influencer. Um, I dance a little bit, you know, a little bit of everything. I'm also a part-time Power Ranger on TikTok. <laughs> I'm, I'm the pink one. <laughs> Naturally. Um, yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been singing since I was a little girl. Um, I started actually writing when I was about uh, 19 years old. Um, after I got out of like a really bad relationship, you know, kind of really brought me to my senses. And I was like, you know, I'm going to just really try to take this seriously because I've been, like I said, I've always been a singer. So, you know, I kind of had to go through a couple of things. And then I started writing music about uh, three yeah, about three, almost three years ago. And um, I got here today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for making time to have this conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it sounds like, you know, through trials, tribulations of life and just life experiences, you feel more and more inspired to write. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Music for me has always been one of those things that I've been able to live. Um, what's the word? Live like carelessly through. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, when you go through things or when it's like a really hard time in life, you, when you put all of that pain into something that you love doing, it, the, the, the outcome is beautiful. Um, no guidance was actually that for me. So no guidance was kind of like my career break. And um, it was kind of like, I was going through a lot of stuff, like a lot of personal stuff, but it was also you know, I just moved from Atlanta to LA and I was with my brothers and they, you know, they're dancers. So they'd be break dancing. They'd be, you know, they'd be killing it in public anywhere. And I was like, dang, like, you know, I, I really wish I could like keep up with them. Like, you know, I really wanted to dance with them, but I knew that I, I couldn't really keep up. So we're in the, we're at the mall and I just kind of walk over and I just kind of like, you know, go do my own thing. And I'm like really sad. I'm like, man, I just had to start my whole life over. And I don't really know what I'm gonna do. I wish I could dance like my brothers, like they got this shit down pack. Like, you know, I just, I, you know, I just, I wanna know, you know, what, I, what, what, what to do, what can I do? And so I'm walking through the mall and I'm just looking at TikTok and I noticed that the, uh, the No Guidance song is trending or the, the instrumental was trending. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I was like, maybe I can write like a cool little freestyle to it or something like, you know, just to like, just to get my mind off everything else. And so I just started kind of writing. Um, ever since then, it was just kind of like my whole life changed. And it was because I made a decision instead of being at the mall and kind of like ready to like break down and just be really upset. I just forced myself to kind of just walk around and find something to do. And because of that, I ended up writing, you know, no guidance. And so anytime that I'm stressed or that I'm going through things, like I never take it for granted because I'm like, okay, well, what's upsetting me sucks but I'm just gonna go to the studio and I'm just gonna find something that I really like and I don't even have to ever write about exactly what I'm going through like I could be super sad but I'll go and write a song about how happy I am or I could be furious like I could be so angry and I could just go make a song about just how lit we all are like just because like I can go and be whatever character whatever person whatever emotion like I can be that person through my music and so I'm about to body them all I'm about to show how I ball I make the players applaud I got the haters applaud yeah I'm on that TV and all that hoe can't see me at all she just won't be me and all but she can't even evolve yeah I love that it's like it in a way it's not just like journaling because as a therapist I'm always telling people like you should journal write things down it can help you get it out of your head and mm -hmm. make sense of what's happening but it's not it sounds like it's not just that for you it's also like a, a creative outlet like I get to be yeah. whoever it's like you can create this whole universe like you said you can feel really bad and you can write a song about feeling really happy because mm -hmm. in that writing universe you get to be whatever version of yourself you want exactly whatever you want yeah and that can be really empowering do you, do you have like a favorite style of song to write um yeah I I really like it's really weird I don't know how to like call it a style but I really anything that kind of makes you kind of like like it just makes you like you have to rewind rewind it because it was just like so hard or like because I love R&B music but I also love really turnt 808s like I'm a real <laughs> like I love trap music but like 
I'm not a trapper, so I'm not going to say not, no trap shit, but I just like their beats, you know, I like get on their totally. beats and I like to sing on the hard beats because no one, no one sings on those beats. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's just, I kind of bounce back and forth, but anything with a hard 808 and where I feel like I am embodying like the most fierce, strong, independent woman like mm -hmm. possible in the song that I'm kind of cool with it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of R&B and like, I kind of bounce from R&B to like trap a lot. Yeah, I don't, I like that. I don't mind that at all. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, can't wait to hear more. <laughs> Thank so you, you were saying uh, when you moved out from Atlanta to LA, you moved in with your brothers and yeah. I don't, I don't want to assume anything, but it sounds like that wasn't quite ideal for you. Cause they like already kind of knew what they were doing. They had everything in line and that comparison factor kind of weighed on you. Is that, is that true? Like how, what was that transition like for you? So it was really bittersweet. Um, so it was like in Atlanta, it was, it was just horrible. I was just going through so much and it, it was just not for me. And, you know, at the, around the same exact time that all that went bad, my brothers were like, well, we just bought a new apartment. Like, come live with us. And I'm like, I'm out. I'm mm -hmm. like, you don't got to tell me twice. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I got out here, it was like a sense of relief because mm -hmm. my brothers are my best friends. They are like my world. I love them so much. I will do anything for them. And the way we grew up, like we were just always taught to be like this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when I first got up there, it was like, you know, I just felt a sense of relief. I felt a sense of like a very proud moment for my brothers. And then very quickly, um, it definitely did change to kind of like, damn, like, like they got this shit down packed. Like, what do I do? Where do I go? What direction mm -hmm. do I go in? Because I know music. I don't know TikTok. You know, I started to get kind of like, dang. And then I'm the big sister. So I'm like, I'm oh, you're sis. older. Uh -huh. Yeah. So okay. I'm older than the younger one. That's like, he kind of started the TikTok thing, kind of brought my bigger brother, my older brother into it um, and stuff. And then my older brother's uh, four months older than me. So we're like this, we're like Irish yeah, like, twin. We have like, uh -huh. yeah, we're, so we have like different moms, same dad and stuff. But like, so if for me, and then I'm the only girl out of six boys. So technically I am the oldest, you know, mm -hmm. up here, you know what I'm saying? Okay. We're the mm -hmm. I know what mm -hmm. you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, dang, like I have to like, I got to step it up. And then I'm also older. And as a woman, you know, we mature so fast that it's like, okay, now I want my own space. Now I want my own bathroom. I want my own kitchen. I don't want to clean up. I'm not washing your dishes. I want to wash my own dishes. Like mm -hmm. I want to clean my own kitchen. I want to clean my own bathroom. And it's like the, the maternal, like woman energy, feminine energy in me started to kind of like really kind of clash with that. Now living with my brothers, is kind of like I love them like you know I love they're them like, so much like, they're my babies like yeah. I love them. so has setting boundaries with your brothers having this difficult these difficult kinds of conversations has it made it easier for you moving forward in other relationships like maybe setting boundaries with friendships or other family members do you feel like better able to do it absolutely so they are you know my brothers are like the most important thing to me right now so it's like when I was able to over overcome that you know, overcome, like, you know, that these are one people in the world I don't ever want to hurt, you know what I'm saying, ever. Yeah. Overcoming that was kind of like, dang, that wasn't even as bad as I thought it was going to be up here, which means that none of this is going to be as bad as I think it's going to be up here. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just like, you know, it's a maturity thing. And it's like the storm, the mental storm that, you know, I was going through before I was able to be like, okay, boys, like, sissy has to do this. Like, uh, you know, I got to move out that kind of made me realize like dang like there's it's so beautiful after all of this like all of that storm now it's so nice you know I was going through so much up here just like damn like I don't want to hurt their feelings I don't know what to do I don't know what to say I don't want to feel them to feel abandoned like da, 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 da. and then now it's like no they are more mature I am more mature they're getting shit done I'm getting shit done you know they are they're just so understanding and they're a lot more helpful too. You know what I'm saying? They're like, I just got a puppy and they're like, no, I want your puppy. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you need to help you stuff. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's really dope that it's, you know, in life, a lot of bad things, bad things that seem like they're bad can happen. But if you kind of fear is like the lowest vibration. So if you cut fear out of like everything in your life, 
you will find out that fear is an just an what do you call it like an a, illusion an illusion it's an illusion like it's just an illusion like it's not actually real because you realize when you're not scared of anything it's like well the worst that could happen if I say something that might hurt their feelings is it might hurt their feelings because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. But the worst thing that could happen if I don't tell them is that because I didn't tell them the truth, now they're going to fuck themselves because I didn't tell them the truth. And that yep. still falls back on me. So it's like, it's well, really that, can dope. Mess up your, that can mess up your whole relationship, right? Like, I think that's always the problem with not setting boundaries is if, if we don't tell them, if we're not honest, right. If we're only doing it because of this perceived bad thing that could happen. Like I'm always talking about playing it out. Like, let's play this mm -hmm. out. Like, what's the worst that could happen? I'm going to play this out to the end. Like you said, the worst that happened, they're upset. We talk about it. It's okay. If that's exactly. the worst, then what are we waiting for? You know, like, let, exactly. we can push forward, have that conversation because the alternative is the fights persist and your relationship to be hurt that way, where you get to the point mm -hmm. where you're like, I don't even want to be around them at all. Exactly. And, and that, I think that's a higher price to pay, especially when they're, you're like so close with them, you know? Yeah. And I see, you know, like my, you know, in my family, you know, my mom's brother doesn't treat her right. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't want that relationship to linger on to ours because it's like, you know, my mom loves, she loves like her brother, her siblings, you know what I'm saying? And of course so that kind of that disconnect there is like, I see that. And it's like, I don't ever want, like, I don't ever want to lose that with my brothers and, and, you know, cause I see it over here and it doesn't, doesn't, you know, I see a lot of siblings, they don't really get along and they, they are always like bickering at each other's head. And it's like, I would, I would die, kill, I, anything for my brothers, like they're my brothers. Like, it's like, you know, hopefully I don't ever got to do those things. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, mm -hmm. those are your, it's your family. It's like, you know, when it's your family, it's like, if I got to be brutally honest, or if I got to, you know, make a little sacrifice, just, you know, but for the, for the greater good of what's happening here, it's like, you know, if I got to move out, or if I got to tell you that them shoes is ugly, or if I got to tell you that, you know, you didn't, <laughs> whatever the case may be, it's like, look, you might hurt your feelings, but at least I didn't let you go out there with the ugly shoes. Totally. At least I didn't let you go out there with a big booger in your nose before you went and asked a girl out on a day. Yeah. And I think even as the sister telling them like, you can't talk to me that way. Like then they won't talk to other women that way. You know what I mean? Like exactly. I've, I've even felt that way. Like in my life telling people like that, you can't say that that's not okay. You know, and exactly. in a way that is a boundary in and in of itself, like this mm -hmm. is okay. This isn't okay. And um, you'd be surprised. Like some people aren't used to that. So all it takes is you being like, uh, no. And then they're like, oh, did she just say no? I know. <laughs> like what? <laughs> totally. Yeah. So and people aren't used to it. It's good. Yeah. You teach, you know, we all have to learn from one another. I think that's really how we should frame boundaries is more about teaching each other what's okay and not okay in absolutely. relationships so we can be better like we absolutely. all want to be better absolutely so what advice would you have to someone for someone else let's say who's having something similar happen in their family where they feel uh let's let's switch it up a little bit and say it's like their mom okay and they're having some conflict and they don't know how to tell her you know like let's say it's a mom that's super in their business and they just need like, um, you know, I'm an adult. You, you can't call me 25 times a day and ask me how everything's going. Like how, what, what advice would you give to them? <laughs> I love this question because <laughs> I had to deal with this. Okay. So the mom is the mom that's calling a bunch mm -hmm. of times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you got to tell mom, like, you got to tell mom how it is. I struggled. Okay. So it's so funny that you asked me that because that was like my thing, especially with, with my mom. It's, not as bad as with my nana oh my nana hey nana <laughs> my nana <laughs> will call me <sighs> so many times during the day and she doesn't because she's not out here she doesn't know like you know how busy I am throughout the day she doesn't know what time and, and she's probably she also, worried about you yeah she's worried you know what I'm saying she's nana she's doing nana things you know uh -huh. nothing wrong with it <laughs> but you know it was one time where I was on um I was in a meeting and uh, she kept calling back to back and she was just doing it because she was mad that I declined the first call. So I had to uh, pause the meeting and I answered the phone and I was like, Nana, <laughs> just like, please. <laughs> I was like, please. I said it 
it just like that. Please, I said, I will call you back. I promise, but you cannot blow my phone up like that. I'm like, I am I'm at work. I am in a meeting right now. And these people probably think I'm a crazy person. <laughs> so like, you cannot, you cannot do this. I think sometimes it is just the educational component of it, right? Like you said, like walking them through your day or like, mm -hmm. you know, um, like when we talk, uh, when I talk with my audience about like how people, we, how we allow and don't allow people to treat us there is education there too, right? We could say something mm -hmm. like, you know, well, when, when things like this are said, I feel bad about myself and then I go down this spiral. So I just appreciate it if you wouldn't. So if we're just honest, if we just educate, like, Hey, this is how busy my day is, Nana. I love you, but I can't call like, just cause I can't pick up your call once does not mean I don't love you. And I'm not going to call you it just means I'm in a meeting. I, there are some great takeaways for people here who are nervous, right? The first is, you know, prepare ahead right? You right. prepared when it comes back to your brother, the story with your brothers, like you found a place, you decided what you were going to do and how you're going to talk to them. And then you, then the second is like, just do it. You got to pull the bandaid off. You got to say it. Right. And then you've said this a few times, which I love is like, it has to come out of like love and compassion for them and the relationship. And that just, Absolutely. it'll bleed through, right? You'll feel it. We You'll all know when it. someone doing something with love versus doing something, like you said, like, we can't be like, Rah, you know, exactly. like, because exactly. anger, anger never gets anywhere. Like my, my mom always says, or even my grandma always says this, you get, you know, more bees with honey than you do with piss and vinegar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what she always says. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Grandmas are the best. I love Grandmas that. <laughs> are the best. So, so there's that. And then it sounds like the education component can be helpful too. So if they don't understand us, we can help them understand us by telling mm -hmm. them like, Hey, this is what my day looks like, or, Hey, this is why this isn't okay. Or, you know, even with your brothers, like, I don't like to clean up after you. And then I feel like I'm your mom and I want to be sissy. I don't want to always be your mom. And like, exactly. I, you know, and I think that can really help. Um, and then it sounds like compromise. Like, I understand you want to talk to me maybe more than I normally can, but I'll do my best. Like I will get back to you. Even if it's four in the morning, I'll send you a text. You can count on that. That's where exactly. I'll hold, hold exactly. the line. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's all really great advice. And I know people get really scared about setting boundaries because they're afraid it's going to hurt the relationships. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you'd agree with this, but I believe that it's the lack of boundaries that actually end up hurting potentially. Yes, yes that's what it is. Definitely. Yeah. And any final advice for anybody out there who's maybe having a tough time with family, overstepping boundaries or expectations with them? Yeah, man. The biggest thing is like I said, fear is the lowest vibration. It is an illusion. It is not real. Fear is like, you know, a what if factor that is like, it, that doesn't even exist until it exists, if it ever exists. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're having issues with a family member or if you're having issues with a friend or a girlfriend, boyfriend, brother, sister, whatever the case may be, and you're scared of addressing it because of, you know, a, a, you don't want to hurt them or, you know, they're overstepping about whatever the case may be. It's so much better to just go all in because if you go all in for one, all that weight will be off your shoulders. And then for two, you realize how much the other person overstepping the boundaries really, really actually needs and subconsciously wants to hear someone say it to them totally no I love that and I think also then we can once we've set that boundary we can realize how much it was affecting us maybe absolutely you know and that's that like oh, relief not only did you finally speak up for yourself which I'll personally I agree with that 100% because of the build up the anxiety of like oh my god oh my god oh my god and then I say it and then mm -hmm. it's like this oh you've never felt better absolutely you know? and as an artist like I have to deal with it all the time it's like wow I have to like dang I don't want to tell you I don't like this beat because I don't want to hurt your feelings or mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you I don't like that lyric because I don't want to hurt your feelings or it's like nah no let me just yeah. okay hey this beat doesn't really match my vibe let's go a little more like this way I think this mm -hmm. would be pretty dope it's a cool beat but let's try something like this or that's a cool lyric but let me try saying it this way then you realize that there's probably no reaction they're just probably mm -hmm. like okay you know boom okay. it was all that oh, up I'm here sorry. It was all thought. up here that was making it so bad. And it's like, sometimes if you just, I call it the fuck it factor. That's like something me and my brothers go by. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we call it the fuck it factor. It's like, you know, they came to LA on a one-way ticket and said, fuck it. And that's how they ended up getting the house. You know, I went to, LA, went to Atlanta first with no like money, no like, no plan no yeah yeah no plan but I just said fuck it 
you know, mm-hmm. same thing when I moved to LA, didn't know what I was going to do, but I just said, fuck it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That factor, you know, when it comes out of love, compassion and drive and, and creativity, all those things, like, and when it comes with having to stand up for yourself, you know, that is like one of the things that makes you the most powerful, I feel like for yourself. And it protects you from so much in the world when you know how to just set boundaries and just walk around with, you know, this bubble set, like, you know, you're not going to do this. You won't do this. I won't let anyone do this to me, but I'll still spread love and compassion and I'll still be a compassionate person. You will just know that I have these boundaries. Um, Cause it just makes you just feel so much better. You know, so, when you don't have totally. to hold all this stuff in and have all this tension and feel so like, what if this happens or what if this will, you won't know until you do it. So it's like, just totally. It. And like, I love that. And I, I also love the, like, the fact that it's, it's usually no reaction. Like we walk around worrying so much about what people are going to say. And I, I don't know if it's just because being a people pleaser, if it's being a woman, but sometimes we can get in these situations where we feel like we have to make everybody else feel happy at the, at our own cost. And especially in our personal life, but also in business, it doesn't, there's, there's often no reaction. It's like, oh, I didn't know, or yeah, you're right. Or Mm -hmm. saying that, and then we'll try it again. And I think that that is just such a power. It, it not only makes us feel better, but it's Mm -hmm. also just, then we're in a place of power and of honesty. And I think that the relationships, business or personal grow and then people can trust us, right? Because nobody wants Mm -hmm. to be walked all over or you we all know when someone's letting you walk all over them exactly so I think it's it's all good stuff and it I like that you brought up the business component because it is like who are you hurting then if you take that beat and try to make it into a song that you already hate the beat like the the bit you can't do it (laughs) exactly it's like you're gonna hurt yourself and then you're gonna hurt the person that made the beat because Mm -hmm. it's not gonna be a good song because you don't like the beat yeah. And That's then they like, might not even like it at the end when you've done all the work. It's like better to start all early. the work. It's like, wow, now you feel worse than you did when you, before you started it. It's like when <laughs> so you could have just told him and then he has a fire beat in the, in the vault that you didn't even ask for. And now yep. someone else got it because you didn't even yep. ask for it. Yep. 100%. Yeah. That's so great. Well, thank you for sharing your experience, your stories, wonderful insight. It's going to be so helpful. I know that a lot of people get, you know, we're just, we get worried to speak up to tell people how we feel or what we need and think that it's going to harm relationships when it actually has helped yours and and mine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you so much for having me. I think this is what you're doing is so dope. And uh, I know that you've helped a lot of people that are going to help many more. So keep it up, girl. Oh, thank you. Where can my people find you if they want to listen to your amazing music, see your wonderful things on TikTok and, and the yeah. like. Yeah, so um, all of my handles are Asian Irie. It's A-Y-Z-H-A-N-Y-R-E-E. And um, I just dropped a new song. It's called Noya. I did name my puppy Aww. after my new song. So if y'all haven't heard my new song, Noya, go stream it now. We got a music video coming out at the end of the month. It could be dope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll link everything down in the description or in captions. People can find you, click over, check your stuff out. It's Thank wonderful. You so You're so talented. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah.